Thank you, Vicky. Um, next question. You're back at work, um, and in your case, Vicky, you've embraced the flexible working opportunity. But there is, a, I suppose, quite a big question, and you touched on it. Does it work? Does it work for everybody? Can everybody flexible work? And that's from the employee perspective. And I wouldn't mind hearing from a, your employer hat, if you could put that on, as to whether or not how you allow your teams to do flexible working and how you shape an environment that allows them to work effectively in the team. Karen, could you start with that one? I think it's a really, really good question because when I came back from my maternity leave, I was COO of EMEA. Um, I wasn't technically any of the CEOs in all the markets bosses, and I had to sort of work with them. And uh, I moved to Chiswick so that I could be near an airport, so that I could fly in and out quickly and get home quickly to see Isaac. Um, and. I had a conversation with my boss, so the CEO of me and Nick Lawson about how I was going to work because it was just me. So I was the only breadwinner. I was the only CEO of the household at home. And I needed to make sure that I could work, but also be mum to Isaac. And I had a conversation with my boss, which is, okay, if I'm flying to Italy, I would prefer not to do an overnight. I would prefer to go in and out on the same day. That does mean that I'm going to be up at 5 a.m. in order to get a 6.30 flight. Uh, it does mean I'm probably going to be pumping in a toilet somewhere because uh, I was breastfeeding. Sorry. Probably too much. <laughs> um, sorry, that image is probably now. <laughs> Um, but it, I wanted to make sure that I got home as well so that I could see Isaac and uh, it did mean that if there were periods where I was away and I did have to be away, so going to Russia or going to Joburg, you can't do that in a day and back, it did mean that there'd be periods when I'd be away and I had the conversation about well that means that I'm going to have a day at home to work so that I could be at home um, and I was judged on output, not whether or not I was present in a chair. I do think it helped that I had an EMEA role because that is something which happens naturally when you're in an international or regional role. But it's what I brought back to the UK as well when I came back to the UK. And unfortunately, there are a number of single parent households, um, dads as well as mums. And I have some divorced dads or separated dads who are living apart from their child. and because they aren't at school yet, because they're younger kids, uh, there's an opportunity to be able to spend a day, which isn't a weekend, in the week with their child. And I actively encourage that, because I know I get 110% from that person, I get loyalty from that individual, I get absolute productivity from that individual, and their output goes up. It doesn't go down, it actually goes up, because I've allowed that flexibility. It's not something that I have to right into a contract. It's just something that we agree together. And I think part of that is because I had that experience myself to be able to then give that back to other people. And I know that that gives me loyal employees, but happy employees as well. I think that's a really fascinating point about being judged on output as opposed to the inputs. And yeah. that's the, the premise of flexibility, isn't it? You have to give people that opportunity. Steve. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in the end, I think a lot of this goes back to knowing yourself as well and, and what your drive is. I know when when Sophie uh, said she was going to do part time, three days a week, and I remember looking at her and going, "Are you sure? You know, you don't strike me as the kind of person that can do anything part time. You know, is a hundred percent commitment generally when she's working." And that proved to be the case. So those three days effectively became five, sometimes five and a half, because they go into the evenings and they go into the mornings and they'd be flights to different countries. So I think there is a, um, there is a start point within that, that if, we, if I was doing that differently now, I think I'd have pushed that point a bit harder. And I think we'd have been a bit more honest with ourselves, which is yes, contractually it's part time, but it's probably going to spread outside of that as well. So. I guess it's be prepared or kind of pre-prepare for the notion that those are the defined hours 
but we're in a service industry, and that makes it very difficult to work within those defined hours, even if you are just focused on output. That's partly because of the industry, but it's also partly because of personality type. And if you think you're going to be the kind of person that can't not stop doing that, then you are going to be the kind of person that can't not stop doing that, whether it's part-time or full-time. Do you think employees, employers should be forced to always offer flexible work? <coughs> I think, I mean, contractually, I think you have to consider it now. Is it kind of legal? I think it goes back to, um, it's interesting, I was watching the agency of the year presentation yesterday, media agency, the first time for my side, seeing it from that side. And to see how people are dealing with that differently, I think enforcement's the wrong requirement because it just sets the right tone. Whereas smart businesses are doing it naturally. So one of the companies we saw yesterday has no limits to holiday. So you take, it's a smaller company, which makes it easier, so you take what you want and you, and, you, and, and, and you don't. Interestingly, the amount of holiday people take hasn't changed at all as a result of doing that. So if you're working with smart people and you've got a strong team, that I think have heard that a number of times, is open and supports each other well, it just calibrates itself yeah. naturally. But it does require a very strong leadership from the start yeah. and a very joined up culture to do that. Vicky, you're living the dream at the moment. <laughs> Tell us a bit more about your flexible working regime. Yeah, so um, when, I'll just go back to when I started having my conversations about my flexible working. Um, and I used my kit day, so I came in, I put a dress on, I didn't have a baby meal called down me, and felt like I was quite a professional walking into the office. But I was also coming with some baggage, because I was aware that my friends from NCT, who were teachers, and friends from uni, who were in public sector, were going to do, I'm going to work Tuesday afternoons, and I will work all day Wednesday, then Thursday I will work from home, then Friday I'll do this. And I was thinking, I'm not really sure how that's practically going to work in an agency. So when I came in and talked with uh, my head of account management at the time, so I'm account director, and I was talking to her about it, and she was saying, look, Vicky, the reality is we're not going to offer you that. And I cried. Um, I sat there and I just was in this, you know, everything is about the baby right now and how I manage this and all of that. And then I took some time out from that conversation and thought about it, and, and she was right. But the one thing she said that really stuck with me was that it's not about the contractual hours, it's about how you manage your time. So you're a grown up, you're a professional, so you can manage your output. So rather than committing to, on a Tuesday afternoon, I'll leave the office at 1 p.m., as you know, my friends in the public sector would do, for instance, and no disrespect for them, they are able to do flexible working more easily than we are. Um, I leave the office at five, um, I go home, I help with bedtime and bath time um, and then I may log on for a bit more um, check some emails and do things that I can do on the move and that's how I've kind of framed it is rather than sitting managing my emails for a portion of my day I don't do that I go to meetings I do the things that I need to do that are in the office and then the things that I can do on the move I do on the move so I check emails make phone calls and things like that so it's actually a more grown-up approach and I think rather than forcing flexible working which we think is in and out of the office it's more about thinking about how you manage your own time and being responsible for that and being judged on your output. Did you have anything yeah. you want to say, Sam? I think Steve's point about knowing yourself is really important and um, I knew when I was coming back from that leave that I'm not the sort of person to uh, be able to do my job in three or four days a week. In fact, I knew what would happen is I'd end up doing my five day a week job, which is really a seven day a week job and getting paid for four days or three days and that didn't sound like a very good plan to me. So I said from the beginning, I was going to work five days a week. Uh, and actually, when you start a new job, it's quite hard to get the flexibility that you want to need. You kind of tend to earn that with trust over time. Um, and that has definitely worked for me. And I, would I think there seems to be a thing now that I see with lots of people who work in our, in our agencies, that you're working one, therefore you come back four days a week. And actually, I, I just ask people to challenge that. And I would also love to see more men doing this. I mean, this whole thing, this, isn't, should, this should not just be about the mum, you know. I would love to see it where, you know, couples are really doing, you do four days and I do four days, if that's the answer. Um, because, frankly, you are, as a man, just as much a parent as a woman. And it's that whole thing, I'm going off on one now, but it's the whole thing about a man saying, I'm going home to babysit, they're your children. Yeah, I've been caught up on that one. <laughs> It's genuinely fascinating. Um, so so and I think the other thing is over time, your needs uh, in terms of flexibility change in the world. I'll give you some classic examples. But think originally about how you want to better lead your life. So one of the things that I did, people hear about this and they go, oh, that's brilliant, I haven't thought about that. Rather than going home early at the end of the day, I know agencies work late. I run in charge of all of our pitches. That's like you know, 130 odd a year across the group. Me saying I'm going home at five o'clock ain't going to go down too well and it's actually not going to allow me to do my job that well. So I start later. 
So my official working hours are 10.30 to 6.30. What that means is I feel no guilt about getting out the door in the day, about going home. I'm absolutely fine. In fact, I'm on call for my company, whatever I need to do, networking, clients, journalists, whatever, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday's mine, Monday I sing. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, family. Uh, uh, but I feel no guilt about it. And on, on the, that means every morning I see my children. Every morning. And I also have time to do things that are for me as well, because you can't forget the me bit in this. We're talking about the kids and the work, but you've got to come in somewhere again. Um, and so that's when I go and see my personal trainer. I am the world's worst at that, my personal trainer. But I go three mornings a week, just for half an hour. Um, I go and see my osteopath once a week. So fitting in all that stuff too. So think about what time you work. And I also now work from home on a Friday, and I started off being very lax about that. Oh, right, you need me for a meeting, okay, fine. And then when my husband got really ill again over Christmas, I thought, no, not enough. And I think it is about rules, and you have to lay down your rules, and you have to be rigid about them. And now I say, I will not come in on a Friday, yeah? Now, don't get me wrong, since January, I've come in twice, because I've been used to be an extremist. But if you say, I will not, then guess what? You're going to be done. Uh, and that has just enhanced my sanity so much more. So just be careful what you want.